It is without a doubt a stock picker's market, and things are starting to separate, if you will. I mean, who would have thought that a company like Ford would be up over 12% over the last six months, while Tesla, part of the Magnificent 7, is down 33%. And so we're seeing this divergence take place across the whole market here, and it's definitely coming down to fundamentals. Valuations are starting to matter as yields are remaining higher for longer, and this is something we've talked about numerous times. I've done numbers of videos on Tesla over the last four years, giving it right around a $100 price target. As you can see to me, Tesla from a number standpoint is about a $100 to $115 stock, and it's basically getting into the wheelhouse now. We try to take a logical mathematical approach on this channel and think about a few different things here. Number one is, are you that confident in an individual stock to put half your net worth into it? Meaning, have you done the research? Do you understand what fair market value is for the company? Have you projected out what their future cash flows are gonna be and discounted those cash flows to an appropriate amount? And what I notice on YouTube is a lot of people don't even have a process to buying stocks. They just look at it, they buy it, and they move forward and usually ends up being a disaster. It may take some time like a popular company like Tesla or even Cisco back in the day and even now with Nvidia. These companies blow up with popularity and the valuations get stretched until eventually the people start looking at the fundamentals and realize that they didn't have the competitive advantage that they once did. And because we reached so far out on their future cash flows, we get smacked in the face with reality. And that is absolutely what's taking place here. And so how do we kind of protect ourselves here? Well, guys, I've talked about it numerous times on the channel. Number one, the thing you have to do is really understand management's objectives and understand if they are hitting those objectives. Do you trust management with your money? Then we have to run analysis and build a lot of safety in our analysis because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, when we're projecting out a 10-year span on a company, things do go wrong and consumers do shift their behaviors. Much like we're seeing with Tesla, the consumer is now looking at more hybrid vehicles than ever before. We're also seeing that competition pick, pick up, which means that Tesla has double headwinds here. Number one, the consumer is now shifting their finances to go to something a little bit more affordable and something that they trust. And number two is the competition's picking up and so therefore Tesla has to cut prices because there's more competition out there, which means that they're making less money because the consumer has shifted and because their margins are shrinking. The thing that follows price action is going to be sustainable earnings growth. And so where I see the biggest opportunities in this market is companies that have kind of been left for dead where valuations have contracted so much, but yet they've acquired new companies, they're getting leaner and meaner, and they're going to have future earnings growth. It might not be now, it might not be next quarter, it might not even be by the end of this year, but going past 2025 and longer, there is a lot of companies out here trading for substantial discounts that I think have good earnings growth. And that's what we call growth at a reasonable price, a company that we can afford to pay for and a peg ratio that we're looking right around one, which means the price to earnings versus the growth gives it about a one or below peg ratio. If you start running into these companies with decent valuations, good management execution, and they're getting a high return on invested capital, they're not diluting you as a shareholder, you're most likely going to do very well in the stock market and actually outperform. But of course, on this channel, I do highly recommend just buying a broadly diversified index, set it, forget it, because it is a lot of work to follow these stocks, and it also could be a lot of headaches. Now, there's going to be an issuance of treasuries coming this week, along with earnings kicking off, which is going to make this market probably pretty volatile over the next two to three weeks, I would imagine. The key to this market is going to be rates remaining somewhat depressed. Hopefully they don't break out to newer highs because if we see that 10 year kind of break above 460, pushing 5%, this is where it pushes stock. It, this is definitely where stocks start feeling that pressure and we could see sell offs. And we also have priced in so much perfection when we look at the S&P 500 trade, trading at over 25 times earnings which actually was over 26 times earnings. And even though the market has sold off and been a little bit more volatile, my personal portfolio has been hitting new highs. And as most of you know, I have over 40% in T-bills. Now I don't recommend anybody keeping 40% in T-bills. This is not the plan long-term, ladies and gentlemen. But as I stated before, I'm taking, a, I'm taking a process to where I have to be so confident that this is a great deal and I'm willing to buy and hold for such a long period of time that I'd be willing to put half my net worth into an individual stock. And I'm just not seeing those opportunities out there. 
Now there's a few names that I like and most of you guys know them. So here's where it's going to get very interesting for stocks soon. If yields can somehow stabilize and not break out to newer highs, and we get a significant opportunity in the markets, I'm looking at the REITs as possible one of areas that we could start looking at here. They've been severely depressed, and there's a couple names out there that are very reliable and should do very well if, if in fact yields do come back down soon. Along with that, there's companies like Johnson & Johnson, Bristol Myers Squibb, Pfizer, that should also benefit from lower yields. Lower yields and a sell-off in the stock market, there's going to be a lot of individual investors who are looking for clean balance sheets that want a high dividend return along with some capital appreciation. And so they're going to be looking at companies like Johnson & Johnson. And so when you have when you have 10-year treasuries pushing at 4.6% and you're buying a Johnson & Johnson that's paying a little over 3%, the equity risk premium just is not worth it when you're buying it at all time highs. And that's why we haven't really seen a lot of love for those dividend companies. But if yields do come back down, guarantee we're going to see a lot of money moving into dividend yields because people have to put their money somewhere to earn something. And as we've heard before, the Tina, there is no other asset or there is no other alternative when yields are low. You can bet your bottom dollar we're going to see dividend stocks being a very popular area for money to flow. But as of late, they're just not. The areas that people are going to is growth because inflation is running high. You have to outpace inflation. So where do people go? They go to growth. And that's why the MAG7 has blown up. But valuations are definitely getting stretched in those seven stocks. And I personally believe there is a tremendous amount of opportunity in a few different names that definitely have earnings growth. And so we will get into that in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed and we will see you in the next one.